Good morning. I greet you all of you, those who are joining with us through Facebook and YouTube platform. And also, I greet all of you in the church in the mighty name of Jesus. Before going to the word of God, let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for the abundant love upon us. Thank you for continuously speaking to us. To uh, th Thank you for leading us. Thank you for giving opportunities to change our life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Not me, Father. Holy Spirit, you speak through me. I give you glory and honor to you in the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father. Okay, so today I would like to share the word, the topic called the move of the Holy Spirit. The move of the Holy Spirit. So turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was overing over the face of the waters. I read in New King James Version. So I'm going to read in Amplified. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void or a waste and emptiness and darkness was upon the face and Holy Spirit was covering the entire place. Okay, so turn with me to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says like this in Amplified. But you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness to tell the people about me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Right. So, Holy Spirit. In this world, some people won't accept the Holy Spirit as God. Do you agree with me? Okay. So, some people say Holy Spirit means it's just a spirit or just an object. But sometimes we don't... Uh, God doesn't have, Holy Spirit doesn't have a, um, like, um, like this is what he, we can't say anything. But some people say, no, it's just a spirit. But I can prove in word. So 1 John chapter 5 verse 7 says, 1 John chapter 5 verse 7 says like this. In New King James Version I am reading. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father the word and the Holy Spirit and these three are one. Again I'm reading. For there are three that bear witness for there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word and the Holy Spirit and these three are one. Right. And he has a personality. Holy Spirit has a personality. Mm. We should uh, treat the Holy Spirit as a human being, saying when, uh, when, when a person comes to see you, you say, hi, welcome, or you just greet him. So likewise, same way, Holy Spirit has a personality, right? So like uh, I didn't say he's a human, but he has a personality. Let's say like this. In Bible, uh, most of the people say Holy Spirit is like a wind, is like a wind. But actually, he is like a wind, but he is not wind, right? Um, he moves wherever he wants, and he is at times unpredictable. Whether he wants to stay here or there, it's up to him. We can't say only this particular place only Holy Spirit dwell. No, he is like a wind. That's what they say, he is like a wind, but actually he is not a wind. And also number two, some people say he is like a Tao like a dove but he is not a dove why they symbolize dove to holy spirit why because dove has nine feathers wings or something like nine. so they says nine gifts and nine uh, fruit so that's what they are symbolizing the holy spirit to dove but actually uh, her dove has a character it's it's like patient and the, the, they symbolize Holy Spirit to Dao because of the character. Not because he has nine wings or nine feathers. Actually, they, they are characterizing Dao and um, Holy Spirit. Actually, Holy Spirit is not Dao. He is like a Dao. And uh, next, 
some people they say in Bible also says he is poured like a oil. He is poured like a oil, but he is not oil. What oil represents for? It represents for anointing, for healing process. So physically or mentally, if you want healing process, Holy Spirit is a comforter, He is a helper. He is there to physically or mentally to heal your uh, matters or the wound or the pains in your heart, hurtings. He is there to help you as a comforter. And also, but he is not, he is not oil, he is like a oil. And also, he is like a fire. He is like a fire, but actually he is not fire. It shows, fire represents says, its holy presence, or holy, glory as well as purification and cleansing action of the Holy Spirit. That's what it says, Holy Spirit is like a fire. So we can see he's just not like wind, dove, oil, or uh, what else, fire. So many things we say is Holy Spirit. But actually he has a personality. It's like a Tao, but it's not Tao, right? So, apart from this, I just wanted to shift what is the meaning of a move, right? What is the meaning of move means? Let's discuss some points. What's, uh, what is the meaning gives like move? It says act, action, change, a movement, or motion, or a shift something we can shift one place to another or a turn or else we can say um, a turning point or something we can say uh, something happens uh, some turning points or turnover take place in so for some thing right again coming back to holy spirit we usually talk and sing about holy spirit in our churches at home asking asking him to Make a move, make a move, make a move, make a move in my life, make a move in my personal life, make a move in my ministry, make a move, make a move in my business, make a move in the uh, company or in, uh, in the education process. We'll ask for make a move, make a move. The Holy Spirit uh, ministry is similar to uh, a move of a river. What? Actually, there's water here. This water... If I shake only, it will move, right? But actually, it's not, it's not like a river. But when you see a river, it always moves. It, it won't stay in one place. It always moves. Same way, Holy Spirit moves this world. He moves things. He changes everything into upside down. He changes everything. He moves things. Unfortunately, we are not giving space to Holy Spirit to move things in our life. We are just holding. We are just leaning uh, in our own thoughts. So the, move, uh, the movement in some churches or include the body of Christ as disappointed or like ignore the things and or they have like instead of Holy Spirit, the move of Holy Spirit, they have just fixed static things or the agenda of the human thoughts right so uh, like say like a timetable they have said after this this should happen after this this should happen holy spirit you have to come and help for what i have done the the agenda what i have made you come and just interfere on that so but that that's really wrong church right People try to keep the church or the personal or their lives stuck at a particular place and get upset when, when they try to do on their own and they say, why Lord this happened to me? But actually we are only the reason not allowing Holy Spirit to move in our life. Do you agree with me? Right? So we are making Holy Spirit uh, uh, to stay uh, in one place when I need I'll just call you then come and help me it's not a call center to call and just um, ask help for him but um, the word says in our personal life sometimes we are alive we are alive but according to Revelation chapter 3 verse 1 says like this we are alive but still you are dead right Revelation chapter 3 verse 1 says like this 
I know your works. I'm reading the B part. I know your works that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. What is that? We are the we have the eternal life inside us. We are the immorality, right? So we have clothed in immorality, and also we have the life, eternal life inside us. But still, Holy Spirit says to us. I know your works that you have a name that you are alive but you are dead what's that because we are not giving space to holy spirit again the same chapter verse 6 says like this revelation chapter 3 verse 6 he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches is why if 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 you are listening we no need to repeat listen to me listen to me Listen to me. We don't need to repeat that. So actually we are not listening. That's why Holy Spirit is saying the word. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So did you get my point? Where are we? Uh, we have done the mistake. So we are not listening to the Holy Spirit. We are not giving space that the Holy Spirit to move in our life. But we are just saying, oh, I am got stuck. But still say, God saying, I'm, again I am reminding you. I know your works that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. So just think twice what the Lord is saying here. In today's life, the move of the Holy Spirit has been replaced by man's agenda, I said early. Replaced by man's agenda. So people do things what they think, right? And what they feel and what they comfort with, but not God. They are, they are very expert in doing things, but what they are comfort with. But actually sometimes um, we need to agree with, not sometimes, all the time we need to agree with the Holy Spirit. Otherwise we will fail in our life. So we need to agree with the Holy Spirit. They do man's plan. Who? Whoever put their agendas according to their will. They do man's plan and ways and man's ideas. Right? But we should get used to the move or work of the Holy Spirit. We should get used to the move of or the work of the Holy Spirit, not by the agenda, but people make. Did you get my point? Right. In, um, if I say like this, in those days uh, when you see the people who serve the Lord, right? They were really keen into follow the instruction and the law and the uh, law and everything. But actually they didn't give space to Holy Spirit. They didn't allow Holy Spirit to move or work in their atmosphere. But, but actually they were really good or keen into follow the law. But they didn't allow Holy Spirit to move in their life. If you see Acts chapter 1 verse 8 we read early. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. I'm reading from Amplified Bible. Yes. But you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witness to tell the people about me. To tell the people about me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. So when the move came to that place, what? I don't know Jesus. They denied and ran away. They denied and ran away, the disciples. But see, when the Holy Spirit, there was a move, there was a turn over there. So what happened? 3,000 people got saved. The person who denied Jesus Christ, he said, Jesus is Lord. Except Jesus is the Lord. Whoever you crucified is a real God. He preached the gospel and 3,000 got saved on the same, same day and the same time. So how it be, how it happen because of the move of the Holy Spirit. The turnover took place on that day. So 3,000 got saved. If you see, if you read the book of Acts, you can find out many things, many things. You will love to do ministry. You will love to serve the Lord. So much of things, the move of the Holy Spirit. You read, read. It's really interesting book. So you read it and see. So even in your personal life, if you want something to be ha happen, you need to give space to Holy Spirit, not on your own understanding. So sometimes we are 
keeping Holy Spirit under our control. Did you get my point? Are you listening to me? Right? Sometimes, not, not sometimes, many times, we are keeping Holy Spirit under our control. If you have a problem, we speak in tongues. Oh, Rabba Shala, Rabba Shikala, Rabba Riba. Okay, I got the uh, answer. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'll, I'll see you later. If you want to take a direction, you will talk to Holy Spirit. If you feel alone, you will talk in tongues. You will talk to Holy Spirit. If you want to make some decision, major decision, sometimes we won't ask direction from God. Sometimes we just say, like 95% per, it will be flesh and 5% will be Holy Spirit, what I should do. But almost you are done. Everything is done. But only 5% you will say, Holy Spirit, just help me to help me to come out from this issue. But almost you are fully, that 95% you are working through your flesh. But Holy Spirit is not only to call, like a call center, come and help, like not, is not only like a helpline. He's our life. Is everything for us. Because Jesus said before, uh, during his ministry time, he said, I will go and I will send the Holy Spirit, the comforter. He will comfort you. He will give you the peace. I'm leaving my peace. Who is our peace? Holy Spirit is our peace. According to uh, John chapter 14, verse 27 says, I'll give you my peace. No one can take from me, you. So the peace is Holy Spirit. So he is our peace. He is our, like what to say, is of asset, is of everything. So how we can ignore the move of the Holy Spirit? How we can ignore Holy Spirit in our life? Right? So church, come on today. Even for Jesus also, he, want, he, he got help from, it, from the Holy Spirit. See, if you read the miracles or the ministry time of Jesus, you can see. Blind eyes, eyes got open. Those who were in the darkness came into the light. And those who, even uh, today morning, I said, the woman was um, uh, suffering for 12 years with a blood issue in a womb. So one touch, she got healed. The garment. Right? See, many things happen in Jesus' life also. Even to worship the Lord, you need Holy Spirit. You have to, you have, you need Holy Spirit to worship the Lord. Without having a relationship, you can't do, do you can't do mighty things in your life. Even, like uh, what I say, even to, even after the death of Jesus, according to Romans chapter 8 verse 11, turn with me, uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 11 says like this. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Who is dwelling in you? The person who raised Jesus Christ is inside you. Awesome. Awesome, right? The person who raised Jesus Christ from the dead is dwelling inside you. It's superb, awesome. I like this word. So Holy Spirit raised Jesus Christ. Even Jesus needed his help, right? So see how much we need Holy Spirit in our life. How much Holy Spirit uh, need in our life. So, so just feel the importance. Or, uh, like what I'm trying to say is Holy Spirit is important in our life, right? So some people quench the genuine move of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because of the past bad false experiences, some people just ignore or quench the genuine move of the Holy Spirit. For example, I can say the prophecies take over in places, uh, churches or healing ministry or spreading good news in churches. But actually what we are doing, some, uh, some actually there are uh, true uh, servant of God also but some people are they just play around with the prophecies and healing ministry and just they do unwanted things like they don't give glory to God they just they wanted glory for them so what happened with the false experience some churches they block or uh, they just stop the move of the Holy Spirit or God 
in the church or in personal life. Instead of shutting down all the move of the Holy Spirit, we must learn to rely on the move of the Holy Spirit. We need to remember that if something goes wrong, just ask Holy Spirit, Father, Holy Spirit, something went wrong. We need your guidance. Can you show us and just lean on him? He will show the correct path. Amen? So there's a difference between what Holy Spirit does and what man does. If you want to identify whether he's really led by the Spirit or he's doing by his own, you can find out when, we are, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit or if you have a, a true connection with God, you can identify whether it's a false prophecy or it's a false uh, ministry or you can find the person. So if you're struggling with something, if you, if you want really a move in the ministry, you can lean on the Holy Spirit. You can give space to the Holy Spirit to move to the particular issue or things, right? Okay, so let him change the plan of a life journey of us. So let him change the things in our life. I said early, he is a person or personality. So for example, I gave the example in the morning also. If you're working in a company, let's say, uh, you are working very hard and you're so faithful and honest, you go on time and you work hard, but you are not, you are not uh, getting a good salary or things or your boss, your uh, staffs are not good with you or the HR manager, those who are preparing your salaries, they are not uh, giving good remarks to your boss. But one day, if, if one, one uh, but you always work hard and you get so upset. But when your boss comes, when he take your file and see all your progress and see, at once if he say, you're promoted to this position, your salary package is this, you're, you're, you can go with the promotion. So what will happen immediately? Your lifestyle gets changed. What I'm trying to say, the person who has to be interfere in your life should interfere into your life, not anything else. Not HR manager or the marketing manager or the IT department. No, the person who rec uh, recruited you, the boss of the company, should make a move in your life. That's how the Holy Spirit should make a move in your life, not anything else. Did you get my point? Right? Same way I'm saying, when the boss comes and says your lifestyle, lifestyle get changed, our lives get changed, everything gets changed. Same way, when the Holy Spirit work in uh, work behalf of you or moves in our life, everything gets changed according to His will. So let's see what happens when the Spirit moves in our life. So I'll give you some points, so you can, according to time, I will manage. So I will give you some points. When the real moves take over in our life, what will happen? So number one, our relationship style with God, I'm saying style, or the methods, our relationship style with God will get changed in a different dimension. Right? Not like the same way. So it, it will take like a higher position. Like uh, we sang today, I can't remember the lyrics, like a higher quote, what's the song? Uh, they take me the call, like that song. I really love that song. So like that, you can have a re different relationship with God in a different dimension, not like the same ordinary prayer life or ordinary relationship. So when you have a real move of the Holy Spirit in your life, you can see the changes in your life with the relationship of God. And also number two, our worship methods get changed. The worship methods, I, I uh, said in the morning also, if you read uh, Acts chapter 13, you can see what the disciples are doing. But actually in uh, English Bible it says they prayed and fast, but in Tamil Bible it says they they, they started begin to worship the Lord. They just started worship, the real worship. They started worshiping, worshiping, worshiping. They was just, they, they couldn't stop. Then they said, worshiped and they fast. But actually, in that scene, 
they didn't fix a date that we are going to fast but actually it happened when the move of the holy spirit was started dwelling on that place they forgot their self and they started they just they forgot their self and they worship the lord if you want that kind of experience you ha- you need to have a real encounter with god if you want a real encounter with god just let the holy spirit move be a half of you or uh, yeah, let him to move in your life so your worship methods get changed number 3 our prayer lifestyles also get changed prayer lifestyles i'm saying the methods right and also number 4 holiness get increased he is the holy of holy most holy he is the holy lord one and only you mean uh, yeah, i i don't know whether how many all know when we say holy 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 three times you know do you know what is the meaning of that three times we say in the bible but 24 hours our angels are praising him in the heaven so actually we say holy 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 means he is only holy there is no word we cannot say holy is holy is whole fully is holy that's why we mention holy 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 but we don't say holy 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 because he is only holy person right so when we get to a holy person or we go more connected to the holy person we get more holy because in uh, revelation chapter 22 uh, verse there says um let the holy be more holy because we need to be holy because the last days we are very very near to the last days we are going to meet jesus christ so i am ready how many are ready to see the jesus or do you want to die <laughs> <laughs> no right it's it's all everything was ready only they uh, some some we are very very close like 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 very very close very very close i can't say even next hour jesus we can meet jesus so we have we need to expect our very next hour or next 5 minutes even right now the rapture can take place we don't know because we are in last days we are, if you see israel and all everything was written was happening whatever the prophecy was given by jesus is it's happening today so be ready to see the jesus so be more holy well, whenever you get time don't think about the other things think about lord i want to see you and i come with you so don't miss come with us okay <laughs> okay so holiness get increased number 5 evangelism becomes a priority evangelism becomes a priority because evangelism is a responsibility of every christians so evangelism set free the people who are in need those who are need the, the, you can see the, when you get close or then when you give space to holy spirit to move in your life then holy spirit will say this person in a need pray for him tell the good news or he will say go to that place they are uh, the people are they are in need they are in the darkness just tell, spread the good news so the evangelism will become a priority for us because when you taste a cake when you eat a cake actually if it's taste really you will recommend to another person right or something when whatever you eat or go for a coffee or, or a restaurant definitely you will recommend same way we have taste the good news so definitely we have to spread the good news so evangelism becomes a priority for us number 6 how oh, this part the gifts of the holy spirit start functioning us how many all know you have gifts you have gifts yes you have gifts you have gifts okay what are you all doing with that what are you all doing with that are you doing you say no only that prophet can prophesy prophesy prophet so what are you and you and me also prophet called as a prophet called as a priest only that that person can preach very nicely and uh, uh, very um, informatively they can uh, preach why you can't you pray can't you preach because they say when you accepted jesus christ you are imparted with the gifts so do you know what is the gift it's functioning in you right now there are 12 gifts so have you tried to use at least one 
You can't say, hi, you, sister, I don't know, I don't have gifts. It's utter liar. When you receive the Holy Spirit, or sorry, Jesus, the Holy Spirit is one, but if you take a body, our parts are different, but it's one body. Same way, gifts are different, but Holy Spirit is one. So when the Holy Spirit moves in you, the gifts started to function. So with the gifts, you can do mighty things. According to Acts chapter 17 verse 6 says, that, uh, 6 says like this, when you function your gift, the word says, this you have turned the world upside down, you have come here too. You can change the world. You can change the world. You, not them. I can say I can change the world. I can change the situation because the Holy Spirit is inside you, right? So this you have turned the world upside down. You have come here to, oh, they have come here to, ah, finish. The demon will say, oh, they came, we are finished. Oh, we are going to flee now. They are going to, now. oh, our ruling, is, ru ruling period is finished. Anna, they came to, but, right? but this, the word says, they have come here to Anna finish. So this is how we are, when we walk, people should get healed. That's how happened to Peter and those who did the, uh, um, uh, the Paul and uh, Silas and everybody, those who did the ministry, John, you can see the blind people saw and the people who, who, who cannot walk, they walked like how many years, 40 years, were sitting in, the, in front of the church, the temple, was jumped and how? The gifts started functioning, right? So the gifts are inside you. Don't just keep and dig and just put, Father, I didn't have time, so I didn't use my gift. I don't know. Jesus, really? Did I have the gift signs inside me? I didn't know. If you don't know, go and read First Corinthians chapter 12. So you can find out. Okay, so when the gifts are functioning inside you, you can glorify the Lord. You can glorify the Lord through the gifts. So make sure to use your gift and start praying to God, Lord, show me the gifts, what I have, what should be function in the perfect time. So the perfect time, the gifts will function because to glorify the Lord, not to get glorified. Ah, oh, she's a prophet. Ah, oh, she can pray. She can give the word of knowledge. Oh, she can interpret the uh, tongues, uh, the, the other languages. So not that, not to glorify ourselves, we need to glorify the Lord. And also number seven, the yoke will be removed from our life. Barriers get destroyed. Supernatural things will take place. How? How? According to Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 says like this, I said, Holy Spirit is oil. Oil is representing the what? Anointing. So what when the anointing comes happen? According to Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 says, The B part, And this yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Anointing means what? Not uh, Anointing oil. So when the Holy Spirit moves or when the Holy Spirit, when you give space to Holy Spirit, the yoke will be removed. The barriers will be removed. The supernatural things will take place in your life. You can say, no, this is not going to happen. No, actually it will take place. When you give space to the Holy Spirit without acting on your own understanding. And number eight, you will have a breakthrough in the ministry. Actually, believe that. You will have a breakthrough in the ministry, in your life or workplace, education, business. Whatever the area you want, you can have a big breakthrough when you give space to the Holy Spirit. Right? But really, you need to give space for Holy Spirit. Sometimes we say, Holy Spirit, there is an issue. I'll give to your hand. You take over. And we'll pray. Again, we will think, how to deal with it? How can I find solution for that? We just start thinking in our own understanding. When you give to Holy Spirit, when you give to someone, uh, I, uh, I just it's coming to me. When you send a WhatsApp message, you can uh, delete for everyone, right? There's option. But you know, when you send the normal text message SMS facilities, you can't delete it. If you send a mail, 
If you sent means sent, you can't delete or do anything, right? Did you get my point what I'm saying? Some, some, fa some facilities are there, we can delete, but some things, are, some uh, media platforms, we cannot delete things. When you say direct messages, we can delete in, uh, uh, to, uh, in our end, but the other person, you can't delete like WhatsApp. Same way, what I'm trying to say, if you give your problem or issue to Holy Spirit, don't take it back. Just think it went to him, or it's there, he's taking care, he will do everything. Just start, begin to thank. Thank you, Lord, for changing everything. Thank you, Father. You are there. Meanwhile, something, anything will happen, but don't worry. But he knows what to do according to his will. So just be relaxed. And give to him and say, Lord, there's an issue like this in the ministry or workplace or education or whether in your universities or wherever you go. So just say, Lord, there's an issue like this I'm facing. Just help me to overcome this. This is how we overcome, right? So make sure to hand over to Holy Spirit, right? So within two, three minutes, I'm going to close. So give space to him. I said. Let him change the entire system of our life. This is what God wanted us to do today, right? So I said, give space him to do action. Give space him to change our life. Or make, uh, give space him to make a shift or a turn around in our life. So according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 10, says like this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 10. But when the, I'm reading from Amplified, but when that which is complete, nicely listen to me, but when that which is complete and perfect comes, that which is incomplete and partial will pass away. Right? In Tamil says, Like that. But when that which is complete and perfect comes, that which is incomplete and partial will pass away. So who is complete? Holy Spirit is completely, is complete. So when the completeness comes, or the perfect thing comes, incomplete or partial thing will pass away. So think what you should, think what you should move in your life, to Holy Spirit to be moved in your life. So what, did sh what should be moved? Your fleshly things, your own thoughts, your own understandings. Take away. Don't put agendas, uh, agendas to your life. I didn't say like uh, you need to have you need to have timetable. You have to plan your works. I didn't say like that. I'm saying this. Don't say, Lord. Don't keep Holy Spirit under your control. Ask Holy Spirit to take him and uh, uh, you you under His control. We are like Holy Spirit. Right? Okay. Now now your job is finished. Now I'm talking. Just keep quiet. You can't say like that. Right? We, have, we need to ask the guidance from the Holy Spirit. If you want a breakthrough in, in your life, you need really need, need to give space to Holy Spirit. Or healing process, or miracle. You have, if you want to come out from depths, everything will change. According to Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6 says like this. Be part. Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6. Not by might, nor by power, but my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who? Who says like this? Tamil says, Like this. So the Lord says, by me only you can overcome everything. By me you can move things. By me only you can change everything. Right? So... Give Holy Spirit space. God's desire that you allow the Holy Spirit to affect and make a move in all aspects of your life. That God's desire. So if God is asking from you, just do it. Just listen to him. So let him move in our life. So not by might, nor by power, but my spirit says the Lord, he will change everything according to his will.